right, today we got a guest, man, that I've been waiting to get on here for some time. Honestly, she is my favorite artist of this year. You know what I'm saying? I've been waiting patiently, but today we're going to actually get into a few things like her name and whatnot. She got her own podcast, man. Booming out here. T-Y-S-F, welcome. What's good, y'all? T-Y-S-F, that's Yana Shawty, queen of the skull. How we doing? How we doing? Good, good, man. So, I've been trying to guess what the acronyms mean with your name, but what what, what does it actually mean? Uh, so, I start my name when I started, it was That's Yana Shawty. It's kind of like a sentence. So, when I would perform, it would just be too long to, like, remember for the... For the um, the consumers. So my team and I decided to just condense it, but still use the first letter of each word, which was T-Y-S. And then, I don't know, I just decided to add the F because T-Y-S just didn't sound complete to me. And then I added the F and then I'm like, okay, that's Yana San Francisco. Thank you, San Francisco. That's Yana Shadi. Whatever it is, it's something you can remember. So I just, that's Yana Shadi, T-Y-S-F, Queen of the Sky. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, condense it down for us, man, yeah. so we can digest it. Easier to find me on platforms and stuff like that. That's right. So where you from? I'm from San Francisco, California, Alamany to be exact. Uh, born and raised. Got to spend some time in L.A. as well, city of Gardena. Always got to represent. Um, but I'm from Frisco. That's right, that's right. So how would you say your childhood was growing up in the Bay Area? Um, it was diverse, you know, because... I got to spend my time in the Bay Area and I got to spend my time in Los Angeles, which is like two completely different opposite worlds at the time growing up. Um, growing up specifically in the Bay, it was dope. At that time, I, I have an older brother, so everything I saw in him, I would follow. You know, the hyphy era was his era. So being able to, you know, get put on with that flavor, you know, it molded who I am now. Um, but it was dope, you know, just it was a time where being outside, you know, it's not always safe, but it was safer than it is now. So you got to be outside before uh, when the street lights came on. You got to be out with friends. Like summer felt like summer back then. So it was dope. So you come from a big family or a small family? Um, I would say big. Um, you know, out here, my mom, I got uh, four siblings. Um, we live in a project, so the projects are small. So when you got a lot of people in a small space, you know, it feels full. So it always felt full. It felt like something was always going on. It was dope. And then in LA with my grandmother, um, her son, she got four sons. I had a lot of cousins. So I got to experience family for sure. I know what that feels like. So look, I must be late to the party, man. Because like I said, you are my favorite rapper. Like Thank you. Year. But how long have you actually been rapping? I would say I took it very serious at the age of 15, 16. Um, once I moved back to San Francisco, I started rapping at like 13, 14 in L.A., doing little ciphers, you know, spitting my little one, two with friends and stuff. We used to be getting drunk and stuff, being at the park late night. Um, so that would be that. But once I moved to the Bay, there was more resources and there was more opportunity, most of all for youth, you know. Uh, shout out Sunset Youth, uh, Sunset Youth Studios out there in the avenues by Ocean Beach. That's where it started for me on 44th and Judah. They had a studio for the youth and, you know, free studio time. Like, who not going to take that, you know? So that's where it started for me. And that's in San Francisco. It was like uh after school program type of thing? It was a youth center. It's on 44th and Judah. Um, it was open to just youth from everywhere. It wasn't specific to any school, but they did outreach a lot and they came to downtown high school. That's a continuation school that I attended. And they came just promoting their business and promoting their mobile studio. So I felt like ever since then, and then they, they opened their arms to the space. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a mess with it. Instead of being outside, I'm going to go see what's up with this youth center and you know, this youth center had a bunch of people I knew from outside. So I'm all like, you know, they were doing the right thing by with their outreach and stuff like that. That's what's up. They still around? You definitely still around. Y'all should check them out. Um, it's a beautiful thing. They've been around even before me. Like, they've been around for so long, like saving lives, changing lives, um, helping with people's dreams, whether that's the cooking class, the music class, whatever it is, they're there for the people. It's amazing. Yeah, right. That's, that's cool. Motherfucker. All right, man. So who are some artists that motivate you? Artists that motivate me, I feel like artists that I surround myself with, you know what I mean? Uh, 
We got so vicious. She's been around for so long. That's somebody that I'm inspired by. Got so vicious. Yep. Like the fifth time she's been mentioned. I got to go get her, too. Yeah, you do. She's super dope. She's been around for a while. And just, um, you know, Young Lot. We got everybody I honestly associate with myself with is somebody who inspires me musically. Of course, there's artists that are bigger that I grew up listening to. When I was in L.A., I listened to Tupac, Snoop Dogg. You know, when I was out here in the Bay, we had E-40, we had Mac Dre, uh, Johnny Cash. Um, on the more Latin side, we had uh, Thiz Latin, so they had their type of music and their um, Latin culture type of music. So, I mean, everybody I surround myself with inspires me. Not too much the industry. Uh, I mean, the industry, cool. Back then, I was inspired more by artists, but, I mean, going forward now, I'm like, you know, it's whatever now. You keep saying the Bay in L.A. Now I'm about to make you choose a side. Which one you like better, man? Oh, the Bay. I'm definitely... Oh, from. damn. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. I'm, from, I'm from Frisco, you know what I'm saying? I'm from out here. Um, but I always have to show them love because that's where, you know, 13 to... No, like 8 to 13 or 14, that's where I spent some of my time. And, you know, that's what also made me who I am. I had a lot of game from out there, came back out here, couldn't be fucked with. Feel me? I was very you know, very focused and it taught me something different, you know? Yeah, okay. All right, so keyed up. What would you say was the approach to this album? Um, keyed up, man. I've been working on that album for almost five years and a half and it was um, keyed up. The name came about because at this point in my life where I am now as an artist, I feel like I hold the key to any door I want to step in. Um, you know, I feel like I've my catalog speaks for itself. Um, all these shows I've done, what I've done within the community. Like, I, if I want to be in that door, I got the key to that. I don't have to ask for it and I don't have to look for it. It's available. It's right here for me. Um, so, yeah, Keyed Up just comes from just all the trials and tribulations I went through and finally obtaining those keys to wherever I want to step in. You know, like you mentioned, I have a podcast. That's something I never thought I would even dive into. I know I was a people person. Um, but now having that little baby grow and, you know, I was always a music person. So having that now is just amazing. Like wanting my own talk show, just seeing that little seed grow and just grow is just super dope. And that's how Keyed Up really came about, just the growth and being able to, you know, obtain whatever I want. Damn. Okay. That's right. Well, some people get up here and don't know what the hell they miss. <laughs> so funny. That's tight though, man. So you basically got the keys to all the doors and go through an uh, opportunity. Yeah, for sure. And the songs, um, I feel like it shows a different level of myself. Um, I've always made, a lot of people refer to me as like a hood artist. I make hood music. It's like for a, a type of lifestyle and stuff like that. And as I'm growing, you know, changes are coming and stuff like that. I feel like this album shows that. This album shows like, okay, she's still, you know, I can't really speak on the hood I'm from if I'm not if I'm not living there anymore. You know what I mean? So my music obviously is gonna change a little bit by my new experiences. And I feel like this album speaks for that. You know, it shows more I don't know, it shows more potential to me. It shows more diversity, more I don't know, it's just different, a different type of sauce on it. Right. I see you had the album release too, and you sent me an invite. You have a live band out there? Yeah, it was super dope. And you know what's funny? Back in when I was at Downtown High School, um, it's a continuation that's based off of program and different, I guess we'll call them paths. And I took the music route and the music path. And um, before graduation, you have to perform with a band. So it wasn't my first experience with a band, but it, man, it was so nostalgic because back then when I was very, when you're younger, you're way more invested. Like, this is your dream. You're going to make it happen. So I just remember practicing with my band and just like, you know, we had months and months together. And then it was just nostalgic doing that again as a grown ass woman with this new, these people that are very talented. Um, it was just dope. And seeing it flourish at the event and, you know, seeing the people vibing and feeling the beat through your feet, rising through your body and just like, it takes over. It's just a different feeling. Yeah, the footage on that was tight, you know, and I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting all of that. And I was like, Thank you. they do the kid and put brutal at you. <laughs> it was super dope. It was fun. Um, there's going to be more of that. All right. You sing also? Uh, I, I like to say I harmonize, you know what I mean? People say, no, you sing. But I know I could be better if I really like, you know, focused on it, took a couple classes and which is probably something I'm, I am going to start doing, being that I'm going to involve the band more. There can be too much back vocals. You know what I mean? It has to be all live. Yeah. All right. 
So what's the best way to describe the sound of music that you make then? Mm, damn, that's a good one. Damn. That's... You said people feel like you hood. I definitely get that. Yeah. But you got like this, uh, like this crossover sound yes, too. Like so that's you, you why get I, it. I get stuck. I can't find the word for it. But yes, I agree with you. I feel like, yeah, of course, my music has always been um, very hood and very like, you know, I, I represent well where I'm from, where I walk around, what I absorb, what I see, my environment. Um, but it's changing. You know what I mean? As I'm getting older, it's changing. My my goals are changing. Um, I'm not in the same space I used to be, not mentally, not physically, uh, not emotionally. So things are going to be changing. And I think for the better. I mean, hood music is is there's always going to be people in the hood, you know, so there's always going to be that pe pe those group of people that are going to relate to that type of music. And I'm always going to be the same girl from the hood. You know, you, you could take her out, but you can't take it out of her, you know. So I feel like within my music, as it grows, I'm going to always be able to speak to my people because those are my type of people. Those are my people. Those are people I grew with. Um, but I'm also very excited and open to seeing the growth and where it leads me. Like I just made a house music like with uh, Clayton Williams, shout out Clayton Williams from Empire. We made a like house music EDM pop song with them bowl. Like that's some other shit that, you know, that I didn't even think I was going to ever do. And it's just the type of audience that that brings is very different, you know? And I feel like because I've always been a hood artist and just focused on that and always um, wanting to give my people the best of me, I've kind of shut down and didn't see all the rest of the world. There's a whole world, you know what I mean? So now I'm, I'm open to catering to all. And I feel like that mentality of me catering to all and just, you know, letting my music do what it got to do for it all is, is going to be a game changer for me. Are you signed at the moment or independent? I'm independent, baby, but I do have distribution ties and business with GT Digital and Empire. Shout out Goto. Been my guy since I was like 13. So it's two um, heavy hitters right there. Definitely, definitely. Um, so that's my distribution. I also work with Mike BQM. Um, he's definitely a mentor. Um, I've asked him before to manage me, um, but he's a busy man. Um, so now I see it more like we're in business. I feel like the management didn't happen because now we're in business. Now you're a mentor to me. We, uh, we, we help each other out and, you know, we make moves. So I got a good set of mentors and bosses behind me for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's almost like you, you prep like the, the whole city behind you. On I'm ready. <laughs> you talking right, your music is slapping, you got bands, you got your online content. Sure, man. We just Follow need the money some ways that family and friends show the support. Uh, by showing up, I feel like most of all when it's free events, y'all. <laughs> when it's free events and y'all show up, that speaks volumes. Cause all you had to do was fucking drive there, or take the bus there, or take the just the time to show up. So I think showing up is the best way, um, and the way that they do do it. Um, obviously, when I was younger and at the beginning of my career and before COVID. Everything, people were outside more. Economy was different and people could show up even more. Even if even if they didn't want to show up, they'll show up because they know everybody else going to be there. You know what I mean? So we're just not in a time like that anymore. So I think it speaks volumes when people show up. Um, you know, most of all, where, when economy is bad and when people are, you know, people aren't really outside anymore how they used to be. So I appreciate showing up. Yeah, you can't really be outside no more. These motherfuckers crazy. Excuse my life. No, they are. It's a lot of, yeah, it's just a lot of weird yeah. stuff. Yeah. You got the tweezers out here. Yeah. So I don't take it personal, you know what I mean? But as far as family and friends, um, yeah, you definitely showing up. You showing up. Because if nobody else is there, y'all there, you know what I'm saying? So it's always worth it when, when the people that are important are there. And although the fans are important, family and friends is everything as well. Right, right. So, what are three songs you would refer me to if I was a first time listener? Oh, um, if I was referring it to Keyed Up, I would say Feeling High, Turban, and J Lo. Um, shows a different side of me. I'm very versatile. Um, so I would say those, if it's as far as my career, a little hit, a little classy. Um, it's my mixtapes, kind of like how. 
it's just mixtapes I have. I have a, um, a little hood, a little classy one, two, and three already out. And I feel like that's something I'm going to continue to do. And I drop those for free on YouTube and like um, my mixtapes and SoundCloud and stuff like that. From those, I would say um, Profits from a little hood, a little classy volume three. From a little hood, a little classy volume two, I would say Row, really good song. And from a little hood, a little classy one, I would say Know the Meaning. Um, but I would recommend all my songs, to be honest. There's no miss when it's to my music, to be honest. Shit, that's even better. You gave us one off in every project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so besides money, if you could pick one person, place, and thing, what would that be and why? If I could just pick it to have it? Whatever you need it for. Besides money, person, place, and thing. Mm. I would say, you know, so I'm stuck between two. So I was going to say God, and then I was going to say my grandmother. You know what I mean? But I feel like when it comes to God and stuff like that, he's already with me. So that's not something I, I necessarily like need. So I think the experience of being with my grandmother and just having her around, um, she was just the most like, I don't know, supportive, like, I'm telling you, growing up, I was a badass. And it just seemed like no matter how bad things got and no matter how bad the situation I did was, she just is going to be okay. And I feel like that's something that's missing, you know, as I'm getting older, life gets harder. And just having that person, even though somebody will say it's going to be okay, you know, everybody says it's going to be okay. But just hearing it like from a genuine person, like, I don't know, it just hit different. So I would say like, Having my grandmother with me, if I could just keep her in my pocket forever, that would be so amazing. <laughs> right, all right. All right, so here's the last question. What is a guilty pleasure song that people would not know that you like? Mm. What you mean? Like, what do you mean a guilty pleasure song? A song that, you know, you keep on the tuck, that you wouldn't play out loud. You too. let your windows up when you <laughs> Oh, damn, I have a bunch. I ain't gonna lie, I have a bunch. Um, I don't be giving a fuck. I be playing them out loud. I be playing everything. Okay, you with it. Yeah, yeah, I be playing, honestly, I'm very, like, my taste in music is versatile as well. Like, you'll hear, you'll hear me, like, playing Miley Cyrus, and then next minute, I got some oldies but goodies on, and then next minute, some, we were just listening to D-Lo. Like, it's just, you know, it's very versatile. I feel like it's whatever mood I'm in at that moment, to be honest. Okay. Right, so that about wraps this thing up your bottom of the bed. You want to give everybody your social so they'll know where to find you at? Yeah, for sure. So my name is TYSF, but my socials are Tatiana, T A T Y A N A underscore TYSF. If you put TYSF, it should pop, off, uh, pop up. Um, my major platforms, TYSF, everything's TYSF. My YouTube, TYSF Vivo. Um, yep, just Google me and I'll pop up. Make sure you support me. Support is free. Follow me, subscribe to Bottom of the Bay TV, subscribe to my channels, QODS podcast as well. We got to shine some light on that. QODS.podcast on all major platforms as well, on all social medias. So y'all make sure to check me out. Um, I'm going to be here for a long time, so you might as well get tuned in. Hey, hey all right, man. And until next time, hopefully, we'll be you, 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 you,